Last week we started this uh, flipbook on fractions. Today we're going to go to the multiplying tab. So multiplying a fraction by a fraction. I think that this is way easier than when we are adding and subtracting fractions because the denominator doesn't matter here. When you're multiplying a fraction by a fraction, you just multiply the numerators and you multiply the denominators. You do have to pay attention now that we're in seventh grade to positives and negatives. So let's keep our triangle in mind, which works when we are multiplying and dividing. I'm multiplying a negative times a negative, so my answer is going to be positive. And then I just multiply three times one is one, five times four is 20. And that's as simple as it is. We multiply fraction by fraction. We just multiply straight across the numerator and denominator, but we also have to pay attention to positive and negative rules. Okay, I'm going to show this one a couple of different ways because it will need to be reduced. I have 5 times negative 12. Positive 5 times negative 12 is going to give me a negative answer. That's going to be negative 60. And then 7 times 12 is going to be 84. That looks like a big fraction and I can reduce it. And I know I multiplied both of these by 12, so I'm going to try to reduce them by dividing 12 over 12. Negative 60 divided by positive 12 is going to give me a negative 5. And positive 84 divided by positive 12 is going to give me a positive 7. There, was a, there is a simpler way of doing this. Let me rewrite this. 5 over 12 times negative 12 over 7. Well, I know I've got a positive times a negative, so my answer is going to be negative. And then I'm going to come back here, and I can do what's called cross-canceling. I have a 12 in the numerator and a 12 in the denominator. And because I have one in the numerator and one in the denominator, I can just cross them out. That changes this to an invisible negative one and this to an invisible one, positive. 5 times negative 1 is negative 5. 1 times 7 is 7, and I end up with the same answer. In both of them, I've reduced it by 12. I just multiplied the whole thing here and then reduced by 12. And in this case, I reduced by 12 before I multiplied. Just a little math shortcut. To continue with the multiplying flap of our uh, flip book, we've got multiplying an integer by a fraction. Well, if you remember, there's an invisible one underneath all whole numbers. So now I'm just going to do 9 times 14. And yes, you can use a calculator to work on problems like this. That's 126 over 1 times 15, which would be 15. All fractions are division problems. So 126 divided by 15, let's see if we get a whole number. And we do, we get 84. So 126 divided by 15 becomes 84. I could have also reduced this. I'd still end up doing division at the end, but to show you similar to what we did up here where we canceled first, if I do 9 over 1 times 14 over 15, I can see here that this is the same as saying 3 times 5, and this is the same as saying 3 times 3. This could be reduced to 2 times 7. And what I'm looking for, are there any factors that are in the numerator that are also in the denominator? And there is. I can cross out 1, 3 up here because there's also 1, 3 down here. 3 times 3 is 6. 6 times 7 is 42. Over 5. 42 divided by 5. 42 divided by 5 also gives us 8.4. 
sorry, I left the decimal out over here. When I looked at my calculator, I saw 84. It's 8.4, which makes more sense. So I end up with the same number on both answers. And finally, multiplying a mixed number by a fraction. Well, we don't multiply it when this, it's in this form. We're going to convert this into an improper fraction. 7 times 2 is 14, plus 1 is 15. So this is 15 over 7 times 7 over 10. And let's think about this. We have a shortcut we can do. The 7 up here cancels the 7 down here. And if I change my 15 to 3 times 5, and my 10 to 2 times 5, I can also cross out the 5s. All that's left is a 3 in the numerator and a 2 in the denominator. I can leave that as 3 halves, or it's 1 and a half. And that's all it takes to turn mixed numbers multiplied by a fraction. You just want to turn the mixed number into an improper fraction. We can see if we can cancel to try to make it easier than simplifying at the end. And that's all we have to do.